Thanks for joining me. Sorry, I had a little poop. <laughs> My God, it's so happened. Hold on. Okay. Are you there? Sorry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight on Gay Mass. Thanks for listening. If you're listening live or listening in the archives, thank you for listening to the show. That was Roseanne Murphy. She is actually, um, the name of that song is You Know Me Better. I like it a lot. She's actually from um, Europe. She's, uh, I think she's Belgian, Belgium or French or, or something like that. I can't remember which. But anyway, she's a pretty cool chick. And uh, check her out if you haven't heard of her. If you'd like more obscure music, which I do. And I thought that would be the perfect, oh, wait a second, am I broadcasting? Because nothing's coming through here on my microphone. Uh, let's see here. Fuck. Let's make sure that we're actually broadcasting because nothing's coming through on there. So let's listen to my phone here. Um, I changed my settings a little, so I'm not sure that I'm actually broadcasting right now. Let's see. Off limit show. Play. Yeah, you can hear me, but for some reason it's not registering on there. Anyway, sorry about that. So anyway, um, if you want to know more about me, you can listen to, you can go to offlimitshow.com and listen there live to the show, or you can listen live on um, Spreaker.com. You can also listen to the show in the archives on those places as well as on uh, iTunes, and the podcast is uh, broadcast there. Uh, search for Game Ass, Off Limit Show, and for Brain Purge, all the shows that I do there. And um, also on several other sites as well. I'm sure you'll find me wherever you look for me. So anyway, thanks for listening, wherever you're listening or however you're listening tonight. <clears throat> so I want to talk tonight about Gaydar. And the reason is because I was actually on Periscope, which I've been like addicted to lately. It is a really good, awesome way <laughs> to talk to people like celebrities and, and famous people and people that you uh, see on television uh, and in entertainment uh, to kind of talk to them directly. I mean, literally talk to them directly, uh, at least through texting through, with them on a chat, uh, and actually seeing them live. And, you know, I've done that with Andy Cohen and, and uh, some other people, Lance Bass. And, um, uh, oh, the, but anyway, this week I, I, I periscoped with, uh, with Scott Nevins, who's actually on, um, he is on, uh, uh, the people's couch, which is a show on Bravo, which if you haven't seen the people's couch, it's a fucking great concept. And, so simplistic, but so wonderful because, um, it came out a couple years ago. Um, and it's, uh, a show on, like I said, on Bravo, it's a show where you're watching other people watch television and their reactions to the show. And it's a great show. It's fun. And you of course see yourself in the show and see the things that you're thinking and feeling being mirrored back to you by the people on the couch and all the things you've seen and talked about throughout the week on the shows you watch, like, you know, all the Bravo shows, like the housewife shows or whatever, and other shows like scandal or they, they watch all sorts of shows from different networks and things. So it's pretty funny. It's fun. Anyway, one of the, there's several different represent representatives of America, basically there, um, and, you know, several families and there's couples and, and friends. And one of the three friends is Scott Nevins and his friend Emerson. Uh, and, uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. I'm so sorry, but, uh, they, they're, they're pretty funny. They're all gay. And, uh, so you get to see the gay perspective <clears throat> on these same shows and you get to see the perspective from various uh, families, like I said, and other people, straight people, gay people, black people, white people, <laughs> all kinds of old people. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, so he's on that show and he's actually pretty well. Uh, I mean, I think he's pretty well known. I mean, if you see his face, you'll recognize it because you would know who he is if you saw his face. So he's not like an A-list actor, but he's working his way up. He's trying to, so good luck for him. Anyway, my point is, is that I did talk to him uh, through Periscope and he agreed to be on the show and um, sometime in the future. So I appreciate that. So I'll let you know when he's going to be on the show. And also today I talked to uh, Emerson, who's also on the show, um, on the uh, People's Couch show. And I was talking to him. It was the first time I've ever, ever chatted with him on, on his Periscope. And he was discussing, or I was talking about Gaydar. I can't remember how it came up in conversation, but he just like went off about how Gaydar is just stereotyping people. That's all it is. And it's not really a real thing and blah, blah, blah. Well, I disagree with that. And I just let it go. And I said, well, I'd love to talk to you about it on my show. And he said, he'd come on the show and talk about it, whatever. Great. Anyway, the thing is, is that I wanted to talk about Gaydar on the show tonight because the things he said were kind of interesting and um, made me think about, you know, some of the, the things I've thought about when it comes to Gaydar. Now, if you don't know what Gaydar is, I'm sure you do. If you listen to this show, for God's sakes, you know what Gaydar is. 
But just in case you're, you don't know, and you're some stray person listening out there who doesn't ever have any clue what, it's, what Gator actually is, well, I'll tell you. Gator basically came about meaning how we gay people kind of know when someone else is gay, whether they're a gay man or a lesbian or whatever. And um, there is a, a school of thought about this that states that it is an instinctual thing and it is a, it is something that people just know. Um, and other people think as Emerson mentioned today on his periscope, um, that it is instead simply stereotyping other people. And it is, uh, in my opinion, not just that it can be that you know, people can look at other people and they can make judgments based on the way they dress, the way they look, the way they act, mannerisms, whatever. And of course, stereotype them, uh, in that, in that manner, of course. And so I'm not debating that that is a possibility and that people do that and make judgments about people about their sexual orientation based on stereotypes. Of course they do. However, I do disagree with him, uh, to the point to, or to the extent that, um, it, it is more innate in my opinion. And he, I, he said, well, how then you, how do you tell if it's, you're not basing it on, if you're not basing it on, um, how someone looks or acts or whatever, what are you basing it on? I said, instincts, it's instincts, you know, it's intuitive, it's intuition. And not everyone believes in intuition or instinct or whatever, but I do. And I do feel that it is something, you know, that does drive us, you know, it's the same way, for example, that, you know, someone is, you know, may know someone is a, a bad person. You just get a feeling about someone who's a bad person or a good person or a, a nice person or somebody who's like really freaky and bad or, or whatever the case may be. So it, it's really um, more about this, this instinct. And I think in some ways it may have been something that we've evolved, not just gay people, but heterosexuals too. Heterosexuals have, you know, maybe they have straight dar. I don't know what you want to call it, but in terms of how they know someone is, is interested in them or they would be interested in them, not necessarily just sexually, but that they're heterosexual. I don't know because I'm not heterosexual. I can't tell you, I can't speak on that. But on, in my experience and the experience of many gay men and gay women, we have experienced knowing someone is gay just by looking at them and not having to have spoken to them or seen them or even known their mannerisms or whatever, uh, just seeing them from across the room. I mean, whatever is how we can decide that they're gay and, or we think that they're gay. Now is Gator hundred percent correct? No, I'd say it's probably 90 times, 90% 90 correct or something in that range. But I do think that mine is highly tuned, attuned. And so anyway, I was looking about this today and reading about it after I had the discussion and in, in preparation for the show. And I ran across a few articles that I thought were interesting in regards to this topic. And, um, uh, primarily, you know, sorry about that. Primarily Gaydar is, um, you know, in one of these studies, it says that Gaydar is up to 80% accurate on sexuality. And in this particular study, what they did is they, is they took a, a cross section of, uh, students from, from college or a college and, uh, showed them a variety of images, uh, for just a split second. Um, because that is how we determine, uh, you know, how Gator works or whatever, how we determine someone's, um, sexual orientation or, or whatever other kind of characteristics we may make as a snap judgment about other people. And, um, so, so, so one of the things they did was they showed a picture in grayscale of a face and they had stripped out all the hair and the jewelry and the clothing and, and nothing else, but just the face and 80% of them accurately, uh, guessed or what are used or attuned to their gaydar, <laughs> whether this person was gay or heterosexual and, uh, or not. And so, this is an interesting, you know, study. And I think, I think it really does prove that there is something to it. Of course, there was more to it, of course. And, um, it also discusses the fact that, um, the more people that you are around in your lifetime, in your life and in your daily life, and just in general, the more finely attuned your gaydar may be, the more, the bigger variety of types of individuals. And so you begin to hone in instinctually, on particular, um, characteristics about a person that are, uh, more or less, um, subconscious and not really, uh, necessarily overt. So because of this, people don't necessarily even know that they're making a judgment on someone based on how they look or whatever the case may be, uh, or whatever it is that determines Gadar's, you know, ability. 
Um, so anyway, my point is, is that it was an interesting study. The other study I, I read uh, was a very academic study <laughs> and a very, it was based on, it was actually a psycho, psychology paper and uh, the paper actually says, it's entitled rather, Inferences About Sexual Orientation, the Role of Stereotypes, Faces, and the Gaydar Myth. And so this, this study would support what Emerson had said today on Periscope about how primarily people make judgments uh, of gaydar, called gaydar, making judgments based on stereotypical cues. Um, and that's basically what the whole thing is. It was like an 84-page thing. I'm not going to read it, obviously. I, mean, I read most of it. I'm not going to read it to you on the air, but the conclusion says, I'll read that to you. It's real short. It says, uh, let me go to it. If I can get my computer to cooperate. Uh, the conclusion says, um, basically, good Lord, there's like a ton of footnotes here. <laughs> Hold on. Here we go. Conclusion. The Gadar myth is one example of Allport's observation that groups that seem to be different will be thought or made to look different. We found no support for the conclusion of prior work that the faces of gay men, lesbian women look different from the faces of straight people. Gay men and lesbian women's non-visible group status, however, is rendered purport purportedly visible by their cultural stereotypes. Relying on these stereotypes to infer orientation, however,